This is about uh, fuses. Now, I'll tell you why I'm doing this. Um, I had a phone call last week from this guy, top end of the county, who, uh, they live off grid, they've got a generator battery system with a wind and solar element to it. Anyway, last few weeks it's been fair middling sunny and blowing fairly well. So, he hasn't got a charge controller on his batteries, he's never got round to it. So, he phoned me up and went, the inverter's packed up, can't get it working, don't know what's going on. So, we spent a short while on the phone. It became evident that the fuses between the battery and the inverter had blown. I think what had happened is, the batteries had gone over volts, the inverter had switched off, then various bits of equipment in the house, fridge, freezer, this, that and the other, had all decided to switch on and so therefore when the inverter switched itself back on, uh, it was a huge load and inverters don't like starting in its huge load and so therefore luckily it blew the fuses. I think maybe if the fuses had been a bit bigger it may very well have burnt the inverter out. Anyway, the knock-on effect of that was that this guy didn't know how to test whether a fuse was any good. So he hadn't, didn't know about using either a bulb and battery or a multimeter. And the other thing was that he really hadn't got much of a clue about wireable fuses, any of that stuff. So. We're just going to do a little bit here. Okay, it occurred to me that maybe there's, you know, it's not an unusual situation. Maybe lots of people now, a bit younger than myself, have never come across wireable fuses. So let's just have a sort of bit of a, a go at this. Right, move the tea out of the way. Important that. Very important tea. Right, okay. Now then, what have we got? Fuses, it's cartridge fuses. This is 160 amps. Okay. So there's those. That's another type of cartridge fuse. Little dinky one, 30 amps. One in here, in the enclosure, 50 amps. Okay. Here's one which is a wireable fuse. So there's a screw there and a screw there. So those are the contact blades for pushing in the housing. And there's the wire. And of course you undo the screw, put a new piece of wire in, screw it back up again. Right. The fuse, wait for fuse blows, don't just put a bigger one in. The fuse blows for a reason. There's a problem. Uh, and if you put a huge fuse in, you'll just burn something out. Or, and if we get round to it, we'll do an experiment, you'll just burn the wire out, uh, create fire and all sorts of things. So the fuse is there for a reason. It's a weak point in the system. As with this inverter, if it had had huge lumps of wire on no fuses, he would have blown his inverter up. No question about it. No doubt about it. Anyway, so a fuse, look, there's the fuse wire. When it blows, basically it gets hot. Which is why there's this heat resistant material here. Okay, it gets hot and at one point it melts and then there's an arc between the two bits that have melted yeah, and then it burns back and the current stops flowing. Okay, so you've got to bear in mind that heat's produced. Okay, so that's a wireable fuse. Those are cartridges. Yep, here we go. Now, here's some fuse wire. This is domestic fuse wire. Maybe lots of people have never seen this. 5 amp, the 15 amp's gone. It's all been used up. And 30 amp. Okay, so in houses, where are we? We have, this is a Wilex fuse, 
there's a screw there and a screw there and the wire comes from the screw through that hole through there out there now then with all these things the screw tightens up clockwise so you want to wrap the wire round the screw clockwise so as you tighten it up it pulls the wire round itself and pulls it in if you wire it if you wind it round anti clockwise and then turn the tighten the screw it's going to push the wire out and you're going to go I can't do this I've never done it before what's going on I must be doing it wrong you are you're wrapping the wire around the wrong way just remember righty tighty lefty loosey right so that's wireable fuses that's a wireable fuse if you wanted 60 amps you'd use two bits of 30 amp wire unless of course you've got some 60 amp wire which would be good right fuse wire fuse wire it's rated for a set voltage so if you had fuse wire rated for 240 volts you can use it up to that voltage but not over it it's, it's a bit of a confusing one this because you would think it was down to the watts passing through the wire but it's not it's the current and the resistance of the wire so therefore you can use this on 12 volts and it will fi be fine and it will work on about the right current okay so there you go that's all we can say about that is don't get messed up in your head in watts and oh have I got some fuse wire that's rated for 12 volts you don't need to do that as long as the rated voltage is above the voltage you're using the fuse for that's fine okay right now then, how do you test a fuse? Three ways. One, change it. That's expensive though. Right, number two, use a multimeter. Now then, on here, we have a setting that shows a black arrow pointing to a black line. And also, on this particular one, we've got a musical note. So, they're not all, not all meters are like this, they are like one or the other, or both, or you name it. So we'll switch it on, and I'll just show you what the, what the score is here. So, it's on continuity test by the musical note. There you go. Right, but if you look at the scale here, when the, when the probes aren't touching, it just shows a one and then it moves down to naught that shows there's continuity if it moved down to say 500 or something it will show that there is a path through but there is some resistance also so is this fuse any good poke that on there and on there yep that's fine good okay same here you go, same as, is this bulb any good? It's an indicator bulb. Is it any good? No, it's completely duff. Let's find another one. You know, just think about it, a, a bulb is the same as a fuse. Pull too much through it and it'll blow. And that, that bulb's all right. Okay, second way of testing, no, third way of testing the uh, a fuse 12 volt indicator bulb 12 volt battery you know you haven't got a meter with you so let's have a look which one should we test let's test this one so we go from any side of the battery doesn't matter to there I mean you can hold it on and just the terminals and all sorts of things but this is just doing it a little bit neater so that goes to the other side of the battery there's the blue gun it's hiding 
here it is. Right, this is the other side of the battery. There's the bulb. Yep. We have continuity. So, it's not blown. Simple really, isn't it? Okay, so let's continue. Now, I was talking about uh, the fact that the wire gets hot. So, on these types of fuses is a cartridge which is a glass this is a glass tube so you can see the element so what you can do is you can actually as a temporary measure you can actually wrap a bit of fuse wire around the outside it's blown and you've got to get things working wrap a bit of fuse wire around the outside but the problem being that the the fuse wire gets hot so for instance if it's in one of these plastic holders like that not so bad if it's a very small fuse but if it's quite a high value fuse you can end up melting the plastic so what you can do this one's already been done and I did have one around somewhere here it is. I'm not really going to do it on here because this is all bouncy. Bit of wood with a hole in it. Put the, few, the blown fuse in there. Now this is a little punch that I made from a chainsaw file. Just ground the end. So you just go tap and you create a little hole. And the wood of course holds it upright. Just a hole that's bigger than the fuse. Chip. And sometimes the ends come loose. So that makes life easier because you poke the wire through there and then poke it through the end, put it together and solder that up and then trim it off. And I just noticed that this one, that's how that one was done. And I might just put a photo of this because you can see it's burnt. The wire's gone and it's actually, there's a bit of paper in there saying Durite 10 amps. And it's actually started to burn the paper. So, you can repair fuses, but you've got to be aware of the fact that um, they get hot. Beyond that, there's cartridge fuses, all sorts of things. And then, there are these things called circuit breakers. Okay, now these, they've got a bimetal strip inside, which gets hot and then flips things open, flips and disconnects. So I thought we'd have an experiment. That one says 16. And it feels like it's got a, quite a firm contact. So let's have an experiment and see what happens when we use DC on this. Okay, here we go. 12 volt battery. Power to the resistance wire that we've used on other experiments. Then through the meter, and we've got, remember we're on 12 volts here, so then we're back to the battery. And I just, it's switched on, and I'll just go like that, and a little bit goes closed. Okay, so the resistance is too long. So let's try that. There are we. 30 amps. Things is getting warm and it's not tripped. What's going on? Okay, so I suspect these are based on what? So therefore, if that's 16 amps at uh, 240 volts, that's basically 4 kilowatt. So therefore, at 12 volts, we're just into an enormous amount of current. We haven't got a contact there. Let's try that. There we go. What are we on? 50 amps, and it's still not for it. There it went. 
So let's just go back a bit. It says 16 amps, okay? Switch it back on. It should have cooled down a bit now. It's drawing 38 amps and then it's tripped out. Let's go back a bit more. Haven't got a contact there. Stay there. Switch it on. Right, 26 amps. Still not tripped. Yeah, things is getting warm here. There it's gone. So, not suitable. One last bit here, whilst that cools down. Here's an industrial isolator switch. Very useful. And it's got three phases, three fuses in it from the three phases. But, of course, if you're using this on DC, it's got wireable fuses, and you could put all these three in parallel. So these are 10 amps, so therefore you can put all three in parallel and handle 30 amps. Yeah. Or you can fuse the positive and the negative on the DC side. You can do whatever you want, but yeah, they're porcelain, they're quite nice, and it's a nice industrial type isolator. Hope that's been some use.